In this video, I will explain our anesthesia method for carpal tunnel syndrome surgery. I will walk you through the procedure on an actual consenting patient, and then we will review nuts and bolts about the wrist block technique that are customized for the carpal tunnel surgery and a fast turnover. I will also talk about pros and cons of distal nerve blocks, median and ulnar that you need for this operation, as opposed to the volant technique or local anesthetic infiltration by the surgeon. But let me first express thank you to so many colleagues who continue reaching out with comments and testimonials to the value of the Nesora YouTube channel. If you do like this video, subscribe to Nesora channel so you don't miss our new instructional videos. And now let's get started. But what is Volant Technique? The Volant is an acronym for Wide Awake Local Anesthesia No Tourniquet. There's really nothing new or revolutionary about volant technique as you could use local anesthetic infiltration to perform many different operations from eye surgery to hernia raffi to C-section, hand or foot surgery and many others. But the volant anesthesia technique is lately promoted mostly by hand surgeons and it consists of injecting usually 1% lidocaine with 1 to 100,000 epinephrine into the planned area of incision and surgical dissection. Now, to decrease the discomfort of the injection, some surgeons also use or add bicarbonate. Bupivacaine and rupivacaine are typically avoided for volant technique given their high potential for cardiotoxicity. But for shorter cases, it is recommended that two or three patients are injected prior to taking them into the operating room to allow time for the epinephrine and lidocaine to reach maximal effect, which is anesthesia and vasoconstriction. I have also heard some surgeons making a statement that volant technique is particularly good because you don't have to monitor the patients having volant. This is violations of the standards of care. Any patient who receives a local anesthetic must be monitored fully. Now, patients with the volant technique, just like with any other technique that we use for it, with the distal nerve blocks, can leave immediately home without negative side effects and inconveniences of sedation. So it's just about the same. But what is really a difference between volant and a distal techniques or distal nerve blocks? To explain the difference, it's probably best to introduce you to our practice. So this is Zoll the home of Nysora Europe Hospital in Genk, Belgium. And these are our top hand surgeons, Joris Dürings and Peter Kakebeke. Now these two hand surgeons are both fellowship trained and hold doctorate degrees. Each one of them does anywhere between 15 to 30 cases a day. And there's no way that they would be able to do this volume of surgery or cases by injecting their patients themselves with volant techniques and making or managing the patients intraoperatively. I have taught at universities worldwide, but the degree of skill, techniques, and equipment innovations done by these two surgeons I have not seen anywhere. And I will confidently say that Zoll Hospital in Genk, Belgium, is one of the best places in the world to have the hand surgery done. I had mine. Whatever the hand surgery, these guys are the top cats. And this success is also partly because our local regional anesthesia service is there to allow them to operate large volume of patients and pathologies without needing to struggle administering anesthesia and infiltration themselves or being limited to not being able to use a tourniquet. With a distal extremity nerve blocks, specific nerve blocks, you preserve the hand function, you can test the integrity of the tendons, and you can also use tourniquet if you have to. So while wand technique can be valuable on aesthetic option when performed by surgeons, I would call it a do-it-yourself or DIY technique. Hardworking professionals such as our hand surgeons and their patients benefit from the professional anesthesia service and the time efficiency of the distal nerve blocks. So here we're going to do a carpal tunnel syndrome surgery right there. Okay, and we're going to use ultrasound to accomplish median nerve block and the ulnar nerve block with local anesthetic infiltration for the skin only for any remaining 
branches of the superficial radial nerve or muscular cutaneous nerve or antibrachial cutaneous nerve. So that's what we need for the surgery. So again, median nerve block, allied nerve block, and cutaneous infiltration. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the median nerve block. So let's position the transducer in between the palmar crease and the ulnar crease, somewhere in the middle. There we go. We want to slack off any cables and create nice working environment. What we see here is not that enticing, so we're going to go a bit more distal, 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 and now with a more distal approach, there's a very nice view of the median nerve right there. We go a bit more distal or proximal to make sure that we get the best possible image. Our focus is really getting the best possible view of these sheets. So this is a superficial flexors and a deep flexors and the sheath that envelops the median nerve is what we're really interested in because the injection occurs between the two tissue layers. Very good. We're going to use an aeroplane technique here. So we're going to place a needle yeah, at a steep angle. Good. Get the transducer a little closer. And we're advancing the needle until we see the needle tip. Advance, keep going, very good. So that's a needle tip right there. So we're going to pass that in that plane. Stop for one second. Here we need to use what we call a creep up technique because now the needle has passed the ultrasound beam and we need to uh, actually move the transducer slightly higher up so we can see the needle again. So do that little slight maneuver. There you go. So now we can see that the needle tip is somewhere around here. Okay, so we need to avoid the median nerve by going slightly more lateral or medial, actually medial in this situation. Advance, very good, advance. You want to go through that sheet, advance, push, good, pull back and stay there. Okay, here we go, the test of injection, one and two and three. We need to pull the needle back, we need to pull the needle back. Okay, slack of the pressure, very important. Okay, now with the less pressure, we should be seeing a very nice spread. Pull the needle back a little bit more. Okay, that's what we want. So now, if you refocus here, you'll see now it's nice distribution, the local anesthetic around the median nerve. Okay, stay there one more time. Aspiration negative, that's what you want. Perfect, okay, so we're done with this. Okay, so now we see nice image of the ulnar artery, and that's the ulnar nerve. Okay, so we have plenty of space in between two, the two to pass the needle to inject local anesthetic again between the tissue sheets of the superficial and the deep flexors. There they are, okay? Again, out of plane. Click. And we use outer plane here just because it's fairly superficial and allows us a great degree of control. But again, you can use outer plane or advance it deeper, 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 advance a bit deeper. That's it. Pull back a tiny bit, pull back a tiny bit. Slack of pressure. Okay. Pull back, pull back. That's it. Okay. So now we can clearly see how the ulnar nerve has been basically encircled by the local anesthetic. Okay, the next thing that we need to do, we can eliminate the ultrasound. It's just a simple, good, while injecting, yes. Good. Okay, continue, continue all the way to here, to the radial side. Good. Yeah, perfect, done. Okay, that was it. For anesthesia of the hand, you need the ulnar nerve and the median nerve. However, do notice that these territories over here are innervated by nerves that come from more proximal destinations. This part over here is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve and this over here is innervated by the cutaneous antibrachial nerve, cutaneous 
antibracket nerve. So what really that means is while we can get a complete anesthesia for this part and a deep aspect of the carpal tunnel with median and ulnar nerve block alone, we will need skin anesthesia for complete anesthetic over here, which we accomplish simply by superficial local anesthetic infiltration, making sure that that never occurs, that injection never occurs inside the carpal tunnel. So to find the median nerve using ultrasound is we typically start sonogramming anywhere between the elbow crease and the wrist crease, anywhere in between, typically about five to 10 centimeters more proximal to the wrist crease. Here we can see in a sora compendium that we apply a transducer at about some proximal distance from the wrist. And what we really want to determine is the location of the median nerve. Let's play this. If we play the video, we can see the median nerve, how it is sandwiched between the superficial flexors and the deep flexors. This is the fascia. These are the superficial flexors of the digits. And these are the deep flexors of the digits. We really want to inject a local anesthetic in between these two fascia layers that separates the superficial from the deep flexors of the digits. Because placing a needle here for an injection or here for an injection to encircle the median nerve is what you really want to accomplish with this anesthetic technique. You do not want to inject local anesthetic around the nerve, but only in one specific location to make sure that that tissue space breathes. Let's review this using Nisora's reverse ultrasound anatomy. So that's the median nerve. This is the illustration. And now we're going to go back to the ultrasound image. And if you watch this a number of times back and forth, then actually you can quickly ingrain the sonar anatomy pattern that is necessary to quickly recognize median nerve when you are performing the block. And in here is the reverse ultrasound anatomy that clearly demonstrates the needle entering that space in between the superficial and the deep flexors. And what we want to see is an injection of local anesthetic in that space that pushes the median nerve away from the needle tip. To perform other nerve block, all we want to do is go slightly more medially. So slide your transducer a, a bit more medial, and then basically that is the anatomy that we're trying to, to visualize. In here we can see the ultrasound image of the ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve right next to it. And you want to find a position where there's sufficient space between the ulnar nerve and the ulnar artery. So you can inject the local anesthetic in between and fill that space. Again, local anesthetic can be injected here or in between the artery and the nerve. But the idea is that we do only one injection whenever possible. Typically, we insert the needle using arrow plane technique. And once we see the needle tip in between the two tissue layers or two fascia of the superficial and the deep flexors, we inject two to three or four milliliters of local anesthetic, which is sufficient. Again, you can do this in plane as well. It makes no difference. Whatever technique is best for you or whatever technique is best suited for the particular anatomy that you see on ultrasound. Watching the reverse ultrasound anatomy animations is extremely useful because it goes between the ultrasound image and illustration back to ultrasound image so you can ingrain the sonar anatomic patterns and be ready next time when you place the transducer on the patient to recognize it immediately. And with the technique that we just described, the surgeons have a complete anesthesia for the operation. If they want to, they can easily use tourniquet. Oftentimes they just use S-mark, basically exsanguinate up to the arm or forearm level. But again, if the tourniquet is required, it's also okay to use it on the forearm as much as you need to. This particular technique with distal nerve blocks also allows you to evaluate the function of the tendons. While you do block the intrinsic hand muscles, the flexors of the digits are unaffected and so are the extensors if you need to go there. And make sure to subscribe to Nesora YouTube channel if you already have not done so.